Greetings trainers, I'm Rich Lund and welcome to another episode of Indy Labs where we put the science in your hands. On July 6th, 2016, the world changed. Pokemon Go was released. I hate it when the cliche phrase, took the world by storm, gets tossed around and overused, but I think it really does apply here. Whether you play this game or not, things changed overnight. Suddenly, kids are begging mom and dad to take them outside, take them to the park. And at the same time, some old school Pokemon fans were suddenly dragging their kids to the park. I've seen all ages playing this game. Every one of us has to be more alert while driving, so that kid who's chasing down the Dratini can stay safe and learn how to be more alert. Seriously, the kid just like walked right in front of my car. You know who you are. Businesses lucky enough to become Poke Stops have been cashing in on this big time too. 20% off your bill if you set a lure here. Even my 90 year old grandmother has heard of this game. I gotta admit, even I downloaded it and have been playing. Yeah, currently at level 24. Got myself a 1665 Flareon that can really tear you up at gyms. And I am up to 248 Magikarp candy. So you know we'll be seeing a Gyarados soon. And because I'm not a noob, I've been stockpiling my 10k eggs. And I got my 810 Haunter and just a couple candies away from getting that guy into a super huge Gengar. So watch out. And there's somebody on Team Valor named Magic Jack 365 And I don't know who that is, but I kick them out of every gym every chance I get. <laughs> and yes, as it appears, I am proudly Team Mystic. Come on, they study the science of how the Pokemon evolve? Which team did you think I'd be on? The thing is, as I played this game, I couldn't help but feel like it was something familiar to me. Like I'd done this before. Wandering around, trying to find new species that I haven't found before. Hoping for something different, new, and impressive. This game has so many parallels to what a field entomologist does. For those who don't know, entomology is the scientific study of insects. And it used to be a more inclusive term. It would include just about anything terrestrial with an exoskeleton, like spiders and scorpions, just about any land arthropod. But nowadays, if you want to get technical, the term really does just mean the study of insects. And while we're at it, there's another similar word, etymology, but that's the study of words and their roots. I wonder what the etymology of the word entomology is. Well, it all hit me at once. If you've got a passion for playing Pokemon Go, well, let's evolve that into a passion for entomology. Plus, I think it's high time we had a contest. I'll be explaining that near the end of the video, and you got to listen to all the rules if you want to play. Now, entomology is a huge field, and uh, there's a lot of different types of entomologists out there who can study some very specific and very different things. But some entomologists, their whole career truly is just getting out there and trying to get some of the best photographs they can of new and different species. Well, I thought, hey, why not give my viewers an Indie Labs that's devoted to getting you to build your own field guide? The only material you're gonna need for this is a smartphone or some other way of taking photographs out there in the field. And when I say field, I don't necessarily mean a literal field, though that's certainly an option. It could be anywhere, whether or not you live in the city or out in the country or anywhere in between. As long as it's not Antarctica, you're gonna be able to find insects. They are everywhere. What I'm about to do and I want you to do with me is go outside, get out there, and try to find and capture a photograph of the most interesting insects you can. A good photo is the equivalent of catching one in a Pokeball. And when we get back, we can analyze the photos and identify the species either with field guides or some online resources. I'll show you what to do. All right, are you ready? Let's go catch them all. All right, I got flowers and I'm already seeing plenty of activity. Let's start catching them. Go check the butterfly bush. Ooh, here's one. Spread those wings. Come on, dude, you're on camera. Let's go. Gotcha. Come here, tiger swallowtail. You know, it's like that 700 EV that you find when you're at level 15. You really don't want to startle it. Oh, come on. Just like playing Pokemon Go, you know, sometimes they elude you. Sometimes they just get away from you. You really wanted that one, and it's gone back. I'm trying to get you all day. I don't even know what that one is. We have met before. I remember the great paper nest of 2012. When it comes to wasps, you look like you're straight out of a horror film. Oh yeah, I'm pretty confident you could give Beedrill a run for his money.
you're allergic to bees, maybe stay away from those. And if you don't know if you're allergic to bees, maybe stay away from those. In the woods. Gotta be interesting stuff in here. Sweet. Got him. This is a Japanese beetle. It's an invasive species. Little leafhopper. Lots of these species all over Michigan. The freaks come out at night. And so do different insects. And different Pokemon. I already hear something. Let me get so close too. I appreciate that. This guy was too cool not to bring inside. This is definitely a Katie did. Check out the camouflage. Looks so much like a leaf. I totally wish I could train you and evolve you into something like even more awesome, but then again, you already are pretty darn awesome. I got a friend. I got a friend that Katie did. Mm. Katie did, I choose you. He tries to move like I've seen chameleons move, where they're, they're just wobbling in the wind. Okay, man, good to go. Now that we're back, let's take a look at our photos, analyze them, see if we can identify what species they are. Now I'm old school, so I still like my book binding field guides. And I recommend you pick at least two up. Most field guides will only have one photo of a species or member of an order, and so you want more than one guide so that way you can consult multiple photographs to try to identify something. Now I took a lot of photos, and we can't go through all of them, but let's do a few. We'll start here with this guy. This is the bald-faced hornet. I already know this because I've had some experience with these guys. A big swarm of them chased me about half a block on a jog once. An identifying mark of this species is that its rear half of the abdomen is marked with white. So if we go back to some footage that I took, we can see that identifying mark. So I'm calling it Bald Face Hornet, Delico Vespula Maculata. So let's look at this next one. When identifying this butterfly, the markings should give it away, and I quickly found the American Lady. The markings fit very much. We have a potential species here. But then I saw on the next page the painted lady. These markings look very similar to the American lady. It's kind of tough to distinguish between the two. Remember those what's the difference puzzles in the funny pages of the paper? Well, we gotta do that here. And on the lower two wings, those purple markings that the American lady has is the giveaway. Since they're absent on mine, I know that this is the painted lady. Vanessa Cardui. All right, last one we'll do together. Here's the mystery man. I have no idea what this fly is. I do know, though, that it is a fly. It's from the order Diptera, because they only have two wings that they fly with. As I consulted my field guides, I quickly went through and I couldn't find a picture of it. Hey, I don't blame them. Diptera has over 16,000 different species in North America. For times such as this, there is an awesome website, bugguide.net made up of a community of entomologists, both hobbyists and experts, and what they have is an ID request option that you can use. So if you make an account, you can post into there photos of things that you don't know. Then somebody, an entomologist, will help you identify it. So I did just that, posted up our mystery man. Now I didn't know how long it would take for me to get a response, but after one hour and five minutes, somebody had already identified this as the tiger bee fly. Zeno Tigrinus. Mystery solved. All right, now let's take this further. I encourage you to start using your photographs that you get to build your own field guide. Each species that you found and photographed could be one page or more in your field guide. Place not only your photo there, but also add some details. Like where does it live? Is it just in your area or all over your country? What does it eat? What's its life cycle like? How does it find a girlfriend? And if you do find that you have fallen in love with entomology and you want more, some really cool Twitter accounts to check out would be Gwen Pearson, I also recommend The Bug Chicks, and Cry Pito, hope I'm pronouncing that correct. 
I follow these three Twitter accounts because they always have awesome photos and great entomology information. Okay, time to talk about that contest. Let me get a few things out of the way. Number one, you gotta be either 18 or if you're not, you need to have your parent or guardian's permission to do this. Number two, you need a Twitter account. So if you don't have one yet, go make one. Number three, the actual contest. I'm looking for the best insect photograph that you can muster while you try to catch them all. What will qualify as the best photograph? First, the quality of your photo. So is it in focus? Can we see some good detail of the insect? Is your photo something that just by looking at it, there's enough captured in there that we could identify what species that insect is? The other criteria is going to be my own personal bias of what insects I prefer. Sorry. Admittedly, that's the least scientific part of all of this. Number four, if you have an entry, you're gonna submit it through Twitter. You're going to tweet it out and you must use two hashtags. Those two hashtags are hashtag Indie Labs, so that way I can find it, and also hashtag Entomology, because I think it'd be really cool if other entomology enthusiasts were able to see your photos. And just so you know, there is no limit on how many entries you can do. However, number five, there is a deadline. Can't let this contest just run forever. So my last day that I'm going to be looking at entries is going to be November 30th. So if your tweet is dated December 1st or any day after that, sorry, you missed out. Thumbs the brakes. I don't care if you photograph a two-headed praying mantis that sheds glitter. It's not counting. Actually, if you find that, yeah, still tweet that out. I, I, want, I want to see that. Number six, what are the prizes? Well, I'm going to have six winners. There's going to be one first place and five runners up. Each of the five runners up are going to receive one of these transfer decals. They can choose which team they want. They will also get one of these Pokemon keychains. And then for the grand prize, first place, they will receive a transfer decal of their team choice, all six of the keychains. And they will also receive a t-shirt very similar to mine. Of course, they can choose which team they would like. And we'll make sure to get the right size for you too. That's right, first place, a car transfer decal, six keychains, and a t-shirt. Oh, it's on. Now, how do you know if you won? Well, because you're going to be sending your entries through Twitter, I'm going to be able to find you on Twitter. I will personally tweet to you and let you know that you either won or you're one of the runners up. If I do that, it will come from my Twitter account, at Mr. Lund Science. So if you get a tweet and it's not from at Mr. Lund Science, it wasn't me. I don't know who's funning with you. Now let's get serious here. There's one more thing I got to talk to you about. We all know if you've been following the YouTube videos, there's a lot of people out there trying to cheat at Pokemon Go. It's disgraceful. Well, if I'm gonna run a contest, I too don't want any cheats. So listen carefully. Your photo needs to be your photo. In other words, I'll be checking. And if I can find your photo somewhere else on the internet, well, I know where you actually got your photo from. Now don't I? Disqualified? Once we have our winners, I will be mentioning you and showing off your photos in a future Indie Labs episode. And by entering, you are consenting for me to do that. I really hope you have fun with this one. I know that I did. And if you do have fun, please give it that thumbs up, like, and subscribe to the channel so that way you can stay up to date for some more scientific adventures that we do. I'm Rich Lund. Thanks for watching, and good luck, trainers. And whether they're Pokemon or insects, always be aware of your surroundings as you try and catch them all. is a symptom of our system. I got no problem admitting my bias. I'm not looking at your party, I'm looking at your science. Understand the scope and range of climate change. That's my president, that's my president. Events in the progress of putting claims to the test. That's my president, that's my president. Protect NASA from the rapture of financial disaster. That's my president, that's my president. That's my president, that's my president. That's my president. That's my president. <laughs>
Yes. So what is it? Oh my gosh, it's a blue Pidgey. Oh man, I am totally evolving you. So awesome. <laughs>